Welcome to today's show. I have my brother Yanni here with me and we're talking about the gut microbiome, gut health and the links to depression. I recently did an episode on the live stream when Yanni was away on vacation and I just talked about gut health and my my personal journey with gut health and with cleaning it up and all the things that I've been doing over the past decade to fix microbiome after years of abuse in my 20s you know and if you've if you've taken drugs alcohol antibiotics the birth control pill and a lot of other medications during your life then your gut microbiome has taken a hit and it's something that can be rebuilt but it takes some some real care but my brother's story is a little bit different because yanni has battled with mental depression and he's been on medication for mental depression on and off for a few years and that has had a major impact on his gut health and through his own research what he's found and what we've learned and what a lot of current research is now suggesting is that gut health actually is a trigger for mental depression so it's like this vicious cycle because poor gut health leads to mental depression and then medication for mental depression <laughs> increases poor gut health so it's this this horrible thing welcome to our podcast proudly brought to you by vpa australia our trusted supplement provider since unity gym started as sponsored athletes we're excited to offer you a special 10 percent discount on top quality supplements that ship worldwide just use our discount code from the description to avoid international shipping fees, contact VPA and tell them we sent you to get a flat shipping rate. Today's episode is also sponsored by the Flexibility Blueprint. Ever felt lost in the sea of social media fitness advice? The Flexibility Blueprint is your map to progress, designed to help you get laser focused on what matters most for your journey in flexibility and strength. And guess what? It's free. Grab it using the link in the description. If you're starting your flexibility journey, don't miss our 20 minute mobility routine. It's your first step to quick wins in flexibility. For those further along, use our flexibility masterclass featuring advanced techniques like loaded stretching and end range strength for the pancake, front splits, middle splits, and more. Links for both are also in the description. And for the seasoned athletes, avoid the frustration of complex training puzzles with our UMS Tribe membership. It's a different online coaching experience with strength and flexibility combined. Don't forget, we're Amazon affiliates too. You can find all the equipment used in our videos and podcasts at the most competitive prices with our affiliate links in the description. Now let's dive into today's episode. How you doing, Yanni? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Good Yanni. to be back. Yanni's not used to getting up as early as I am in the morning, so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a bit of a stretch for him. The the the, the most the the most embarrassing part about it is that I still have this stuff in my eyes at night to make sure that I don't relapse with a, a corneal abrasion that was caused by an eye gouge, at a one in both eyes actually, and uh, so I got to put this horrible gluggy ointment cream in, and when I get up in the morning, I get under a cold shower and try to wash it out, but it looks like I've been crying or something so don't worry I'm, I'm 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 in good i'm in good capacity is is my camera in focus rat do i look okay uh not the best but it's okay i'm used to your camera not looking the best so don't worry about it too much okay. a lot of people are just going to be listening to this later so and i'm going to try i just realized that i hadn't set up i had to reboot my computer for anybody that's listening uh i had to reinstall do a clean install on windows 11 on the weekend which means that i've lost all the presets for vmix and i'm just getting one ready now where yanni and i can can both be on on screen together so yanni you can you can chat away yeah while cool I sort that no out. worries no worries so yeah look a little bit of background first i guess i was diagnosed with depression in my early 20s but i i'm very well aware that i had it for a long time before that and as far back as i can remember so it's definitely we're not really sure whether depression is genetic or whether it's lifestyle uh, like social due to your upbringing experiences things like that and there are good arguments on both sides you know we what we do know is that there is at least to my knowledge and and, and you have to excuse me, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a psychologist. I've got a lot of anecdotal experience and I've read a few books and a few studies and that's about it, you know, so my knowledge is limited, but, but I can but, share but, my experiences. Yeah, but to say that, it, 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 it's also important to say that you have been very proactive about how you can manage this stuff. Yeah. And it's something that you, so you might say you've had, you've read a few books, but you've, but you've really been proactive about learning about this and then since you've you know looked gone down this path of i mean are you off medication now yanni 
Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And how long have you been off for? Almost a year and a half now. I, I believe last year was the year that I'm terrible with time frames. My, I, like I have. <laughs> yeah, we're getting and older, this is, aren't we? <laughs> it's actually a top, topic of discussion today, though, because I, I it came to my. Um, I remembered I was talking to my girlfriend Leticia. We were watching a film and. They were, we were watching the rugby league semifinals here and we started talking about concussions because there was an injury where someone got knocked out. And I started to share an anecdotal experience of when I used to play rugby league. And, and, and in the last or second last season that I played rugby league, I got knocked out quite a few times. I, I just went through this period of running into people's bony structures with my head, hips, hips, elbows, knees. And, and I also boxed on and off for about 16 years, quite competitively as an amateur boxer. And so I took a lot of hits to the head, you know, and there is now a lot of evidence that is, is amounting around a brain disorder or a brain disease where the proteins in the brain actually change. They alter their structure after lots of trauma to the head trauma, concussion. Uh, it's happening in NFL in America. It's happening in football here. And that also, one of, the, one of the side effects to that disease, and unfortunately, it's undiagnosable until after death because they have to do a biopsy of the brain to confirm it. So all we go off is uh, symptoms now to diagnose. The, the, the disease actually eludes me. We could Google it and it's, it'll come up very quickly, but I'm sure some of you will, will, will have heard about it. Anyway, I realized, wow, I actually tick a lot of the boxes of, of that disease too. I, I took a lot of trauma and hits to the head. I've been knocked out many, many times growing up as a youth. And so, yeah, there's, I realized, wow, that could also be contributing to my, to my psychological disorders, my depression. Two of the main side effects to that disease are aggression and depression <laughs> and memory loss. <laughs> memory Good loss. Good times. Good times. Anyway, the... The gut and the gut health, you know, the, the, the going back to Rad's story, I, I went on antidepressants for the very first time. I was diagnosed with depression when I was 21 and then clinically diagnosed. And I went on antidepressants for the very first time, I think at 33. That was after having my first child. And the reason for that was that I managed depression very, very well through my lifestyle, exercise. Exercise is absolutely without any doubt according to all of the clinical studies far more beneficial for your depression and mental disorders than any medication you can take and in one study it was it was a staggering difference it was i think it was beyond 70 percent more effective than taking an antidepressant if you if you're getting regular medium to intense physical exercise and it is now shown that a mix of exercise is the best and the most recent study that I read was that it actually for the very first time included stretching so it was weightlifting or resistance training cardiovascular exercise and stretching and if you can get all three of those done in a good balance that is the gold standard for mental disorders like depression to manage it and so I was doing that and and I didn't realize you know I was my boxing I was getting a lot of cardiovascular exercise and then a few times a week I was getting quite intense resistance training exercise and uh, I started stretching with Rad at Unity Gym a few years later you know so I was able to manage it but then when our first child came along we we had two children back to back a couple of years apart that weren't very good sleepers and so for the very first time I wasn't able to prioritize my sleep and recovery and that's when the wheels, metaphorically speaking, fell off for me. I just completely imploded with, with bad sleep. And what that led to was an inability to exercise. I kept hurting myself when I tried to do the, my regular exercise because my body wasn't able to recover at night. And then that just sort of was like a spiral, you know, lack of sleep. That, leads to, that led to less exercise and less high quality exercise. And then those two factors led to poor, poor diet. And you, set, you tend to ha start to have these dominoes fall over. I'm sure there's people out there that can relate to this. But it, the good news is it happens in reverse. You know, what you'll find is when you start to get the, back on track, things start to have a positive domino effect. If you get a good workout in in the morning, you'll tend, you, you're, you're less likely to consume alcohol that day, throughout the day, and you're more likely to eat a better diet. This has been shown in many studies. So, you know, it, it, I, I guess the, 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 there, is a, there is a silver, silver lining there somewhere. But what 
happened when I went on antidepressants. We found one that worked very well. And don't get me wrong, it worked very well. It was like flicking a switch overnight. I, it was the first time I had experienced life, I guess, with clarity. You know, I didn't realize that depression was not just making me feel like I didn't want to get up in the morning. Uh, it, it, was, it was giving me brain fog. It was making it hard to do good quality work for our business. It was making me very erratic emotionally, more reactive to my partner, my brother, my, uh, my, the guys at work. And when I started taking that magic pill, which for me was Zoloft, which is made by Pfizer, uh, it just made me feel astonishingly better within a week or two, you know, and and so yeah, I thought, well, why would I stop taking this? It's 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 amazing, you know. My life is exponentially better. I, I get up in the morning wanting to get out of bed. I want to get to work. I've got clarity on what I'm doing, on our vision. I'm getting better quality work done. I'm getting on with everyone at work much better. I'm an easier person to tolerate. And and Rad, I, I'm sure you can remember that. Oh, that man. period, that I transition, sure it was it was so different. <laughs> yeah, I do. The problem was was that, that did you get on the Zoloft shortly after you threw that coffee cup at yeah, it smashed my that, computer? That that was the deciding <laughs> fact. That was the deciding factor. Like you, you don't understand. All my, all my life, I'd been quick to aggression, you know, and I'd been in, you know, I was a security guard at nightclubs. I was a bouncer. I was. I was a boxer, you know, and so in some ways it, and we it were, served me well. And we were, we were struggling so bad as well. Like, I know that this is a sob story, but very few people that are listening to this would, would know the story of what we went through running Unity Gym. You know, when Yanni and I opened Unity Gym, we had no idea how to run a business. And if, if we knew what we know now, we never would have done it because the overheads of running that, that gym on, on ground floor with shop frontage in North Sydney we were paying Yanni. Yanni is the CFO, so he knows the numbers better than me. But what was it costing us a month to operate Yanni? Oh, uh, look, it was it, it, give or take. It was four hundred and it was about four hundred and thirty thousand a year. The, the rent, the rent alone was twelve thousand dollars a month. And no, it wasn't towards the well, yeah, when we started, it was 12,000. Towards the end, it was 17,000. 17,000. There you go. Yeah. That's just the rent. And then there was the electricity and all the like it was, it was, it was 30 or 40,000 dollars a month to operate. And it was so stressful because Yanni and I just came out of being personal trainers at Fitness First, where you just have to pay $400 a week. And we were successful personal trainers. So we were, we were some of the personal trainers that were busy all the time and we were, we were making a lot of money. And it was so stressful because we also what we did really what we really shouldn't have done is we hired too many people and when we'd hired people we and then another mistake that we didn't make is we didn't lay people off when we couldn't afford it we didn't want to put people out of work so we just <laughs> so we kept people on because we didn't we didn't want to be the bosses that laid people off and we were just so stressed around the clock and yeah so we were just terrible we were terrible business we were terrible business you know, people yeah, yeah. And that's that, that. That's a whole other story. But anyway, back on track. The one of the known side effects to the chem, the, the, the drug in 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 a, in a medication like Zoloft is that it can upset your stomach because you've got the same sort of you've got the same or similar cells in your gut than you do. And anyone who's got a really deep knowledge of this, please excuse me if I if I don't get this one hundred percent right. But you've got the same cells in your gut lining than you do in your brain. And for some reason, the Zoloft affects both and it can, can disrupt both. Now, when I asked my doctor, I went in and said, look, is there a chance that this is upsetting my gut? And I had a history of bad gut health. I'd had a, a travel, I, I traveled in, in the mid 2000s, was my first trip overseas, and I got a parasitic infection and just from eating all the street food and things like that around here in Southeast Asia. There's the, they don't have the water quality that I'm used to here in Australia. Effectively, there is bacteria in the water. And yeah, I came home with a parasitic infection, which just got really, really bad. And then on top of that, I started taking these antidepressants. And, and that just seemed to really, really make my stomach feel awful. I felt like I had a, a bug just constantly, you know. And anyone who deals with parasites, it, 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 it has a peak throughout. They have a 28-day cycle. They're either laying eggs or dying. And in the middle, there's a two-week period where you just feel like absolute crap. 
And then the other weeks you feel okay and you start to think, oh, well, I'm okay, you know, and then it, you go through another cycle and it's just awful. And anyway, I went into the doctor, I asked him and he said, yes, there is a side effect where it can make your gut worse. And then when, when I started, started talking to him about it, he said, look, Z Zoloft was actually designed for a completely different purpose. And we don't really know why it helps with depression. And I, I couldn't believe that. I was just like, what? My doctor who I've had for 23 years didn't really know what I was taking and why it was helping. So I went and did my own research and started reading books and digging really, really deep. And what I found was that there is a, in most cases with depression, you have a an inability to regulate dopamine, the dopamine receptors and the neural peptides that are controlling these reactions, chemical um, uh, reactions in the brain unregulated for a number of reasons, which means that you can go into a scenario that you feel joy and happiness and euphoria and you tend to just max out all of those all of those chemicals and and then the you know there's a recovery period where you have a low where you feel awful you know and and most people's brains regulate that they'll sort of stop at a point where they know that you've used a lot of those chemicals and and they don't and you don't get depleted so you don't have that extreme low where you feel like absolute crap you know and the only thing that recharges everything if you've had a, a a good day is a really good night's sleep which a lot of people don't get you know and so there's this cycle where you just keep getting depleted and you feel worse and worse and worse and worse so that's my very very uh, basic understanding of of what's happening on a chemical level in the brain with depression and anxiety you know so I had this crazy scenario where I wasn't able to get good sleep I was being depleted I was you know experiencing all the joys of being a dad for the very first time um, and yeah taking this medication that was helping my depression but making my gut health worse now it's very early days in the research to this and there's some really cool resources coming out even recently there was a documentary that dropped on Netflix about this gut health and the microbiome and, and the links there but basically it's 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 quite new science and there are a number of institutions around the world doing a lot of research on the gut microbiome and how this how this all works and I'm very blessed that in Australia we have two there's one operation happening in Perth there's one happening at Sydney University here in Sydney and then Professor Tom Barodi has an institution here in Sydney as well. I think it's in Silverwater. I can't remember, but and he is one of the pioneers. He's he's the guy. He's one of the guys who I think came up with the idea of the concept of a fecal transplant because they have identified now that when someone's suffering depression, there are certain bacteria in the gut microbiome. And Rad sort of, I think he brought you up to speed a little bit about what the microbiome is. The microbiome is not just limited to the gut. We have a microbiome all over the body, on our skin, everywhere. And, and, and I believe Rad mentioned the concept of being only 10% human. And that's because the, this microbiome is not human cells, it's, it's bacterial cells. And the, one of the biggest areas of the microbiome is through the digestive tract, right through from your mouth, to your to your anus to your butthole butt. basically yeah, that's what they, that's you know. what they refer them when i looked into it before i did that episode that's what experts refer to the microbiome they say basically yeah. everything between your mouth and your butt yeah so this amazing science and what we're really only tipping the iceberg of right now is that they're finding out that in certain traits in human people and i'll go into what type of traits there are either excessive amounts of certain bacteria or really low to no types of certain bacteria and to give you an example of how incredibly powerful this concept is in obese people they have a certain type of bacteria in the gut and they lack a certain the bacteria that skinny people have and vice versa and so what they've found now they've done studies on rats where they've taken the bacteria out of a healthy lean rat and put it into an obese rat and the obese rat becomes skinny without changing anything else in their lifestyle. Same food, same everything. They just stop eating at a certain point. And now we're starting to do this research in humans. And if you wanna see an example of this, watch the documentary on Netflix because it does t take you through this exact concept on a very base level, but it's quite bizarre. And there's even people, they, 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 they have a cohort of different people. One person is suffering depression, one's obese and can't lose weight no matter what she tries. And there's all these different, one has really bad skin condition. And they basically just 
swap out, they, 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 they identify, they get them to do submit all these poo samples. And uh, yes, I know it's very gross, but you, you have to, this is the only way we can do it. And, and then they are able to identify which bacteria is lacking in their gut through re looking at their poo under a microscope. And then they can tell them what foods to eat to help cultivate that gut because it's like, it's like farming, you know, certain plants require certain food to thrive. It's, it's exactly the same with the gut. And that, this is where our diet starts to come into it and where we can segue into the three keys to a healthy gut microbiome, which I'm going to talk about here. Because what we do know now through the research that's been done in Australia here at the Sydney University, the Gut Microbiome Project, is that you can alter your gut microbiome within three days. The majority of the gut microbiome is created from a from from infancy to about I, I believe four five or six once you're about four five or six so that period of an early childhood is super important to have a really healthy diverse diet because what they found and they uh, they they show this example really well in that documentary on netflix there's one woman there who's super healthy she thinks she's really really healthy and she's but she's only eating a very limited diet as a result, you know, and this is very common in our world with bodybuilding. We make these, we pre-prepare our meals and we tend to eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner all week. It might be a protein source, a carbohydrate source and one or two vegetables. And I've seen this so many times, so many of my bodybuilding friends, you know, they pre-make all of these meals, but it's, it's, and it's really healthy foods, but it's very limited. And what we now know is that diet wise, you want to get a diverse diet of foods. And interestingly, they actually cure one of the women by getting her to eat a little bit more unhealthy food. She has to introduce just little bits, but introduce a little bit of things like pizza and a little bit of, you know, not so healthy foods because she's eating a very small group of vegetables and a very small group of lean meats. And that's it. You know, she's cut out all carbs and she's cut out all of this. And, and I believe the reason why she comes into the project or the study is because she's got no energy and she just feels like crap all the time. And so, yeah, it's really interesting because it, it, sort of, it, it sort of blows my mind. You know, in some cases, you think you're eating super healthy, but you're not getting enough variety. And then you're, so you're limiting the gut microbiome's ability to have, a, have diversity, you know. In the case of the obese woman, she's had a terrible diet growing up. And so she's got only the, the bad bacteria in her gut, which effectively is just wanting, making her ravenous and over hungry all the time, you know. And so the way that they, the way that they encourage these people to cure their gut is to start really changing the way they eat. But that's the long route to the destination that we're trying to get to. What people like Professor Tom Barodi does is he does a fecal transplant where he takes the poop out of a healthy person and then puts it into the colon of an unhealthy person through the butt, not through the mouth. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't have you, to take poop you, pills. <laughs> you laugh, Rad, but that's what they do in the documentary. Mm. There's a couple who actually, because it's very expensive still, because it's early science, it's very expensive. It, you know, it costs access of thousands and thousands of dollars to go through this process. And I'm going to share, because I actually went down this path through the clinic myself. But the, this couple, he has really healthy skin and she's suffering really bad skin, acne and things like that. And so she gets her partner to poop, it's, it's horrible. And we're probably gonna lose views here, but I'm gonna say it anyway. She gets her partner to poop into, if you don't believe me, watch this documentary. They do their own fecal transplant where they, they literally encapsulate his poo and she consumes them, I believe through the mouth. I don't think she's doing suppository. I can't remember, but it's awful. It's the mo it, I just can't imagine anything worse. So I would probably not do that. But really interestingly, and this is wild, it fixes her skin. She gets amazing skin within within a couple of months. She gets incredible baby smooth skin, just like him. But she doesn't realize that he's quietly, secretly suffering depression and he's not spoken about it much to her. And guess what? She starts to suffer depression from taking his microbiome into her gut. And so crap, I'm, I'm depressed all the time now. And then he says, yeah, I suffer depression. And so 
you know, it's, 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 it's kind of like wild how powerful we're, we're starting to discover how powerful this and how much your gut plays a role in how you feel mentally, in how you appear, you know, your skin, the skin clarity, the energy levels, your, your weight, you know, all of these things we now realize can be, can be benefited from a healthy gut. So how do we get a healthy gut? And this, this is, you know, I'm not going to tell you to go and take, to, to consume someone else's poo. If you want to go down that path, there are clinics around the world that do it professionally. And I do believe they I, put I, you... I, I know some people that will probably help you out for free if you... <laughs> <laughs> they, they, look, I, I went through the do process you, of... Do, because, you know, do, you know this, this, do you know what this reminds me of? Oh, oh I've, got to, I've got to bring this up. This, uh, that, that part in Austin Powers... <laughs> He drinks fat bastards stool sample. Oh no! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you remember that? That's so bad. Goes, this coffee tastes like shit. It is shit, Austin. Uh, hey, Yanni, we we're we we gonna wrap this up because we are running out of time. So you gotta. You well, gotta, this uh, is the important bit that everyone's been landing. waiting for. Okay, so what we know now, you know, everyone's heard of probiotics. And I'm sure most of you have taken a probiotic at some point in your life. And the probiotics are really important. Probiotics are basically, it's, it's putting healthy bacteria into the gut to try to balance your gut microbiome and make it more diverse. And, you know, we're learning more and more about which bacteria are important. And I can give you a little bit of help on that, but it, it depends what you're suffering from you know if you're suffering from acne then skinny bacteria isn't going to fix your acne you need the acne that's going to help really help you 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 need the bacteria that's going to help your skin and vice versa if you're suffering really poor energy levels then you know the bacteria that's going to make you skinny and help you regulate your diet isn't going to help with your energy levels necessarily so you get my point there's so there's millions of different types of bacteria and t- to my knowledge, the ones that you need for losing weight and for getting in shape is called B coagulans and B bifidum. And they're a family of bacteria. So they're the two that you need to worry about. But I- I've sort of jumped ahead here because what we now realize is that the probiotics are only one part of a, tri- a trilemma that we have in the body. The ultimate goal is that when we get this sort of symbiosis in the gut, we start to create what's called postbiotics. And postbiotics are the, the, I guess the, I don't know if you'd call it the, the poop from the, 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 the bacteria, but it's, a, it's what the bacteria create inside the body. And that's the, the, that's the godfather. That's what we want to get to. We want to get to an abundance of postbiotic behavior in the gut. Uh, and the the i think the one of the ultimate postbiotics which we're now starting to realize can be created in supplement form is a a chemical called tributyrin it's a postbiotic called tributyrin and tributyrin some studies are showing that you can supplement it now you can actually it can actually be created and supplemented but effectively to to create postbiotics and, and things like tributyrin in the gut what we need is prebiotics first and prebiotics come through our diet and i'm going to give you a list of foods that are the gold standard prebiotics in a sec and then we need to cultivate probiotics and bacteria and so then we can take the probiotics and i listed a couple that are really really good for you to take if you want to lose weight Uh, and then the probiotics or the bacteria eat the prebiotics and through the relationship where they're getting sufficient plentiful environments to thrive they create postbiotics and it's the postbiotics that fix us that heal us that create good health that create energy that 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 give us all the things that we're looking for through our diet there okay so let's just rip through a little bit of info about prebiotics. Prebiotics foods high in special types of fiber that support digestive health. I'm reading this verbatim from my, from my notes. They promote the increase of friendly bacteria in the gut. They help with various digestive problems and, and boost your immune system and even your energy levels. Uh, prebiotic foods have also been shown to improve metabolic health and even help prevent certain diseases. Since the fiber content of these foods may be altered during cooking, try to consume them either raw or sort of not overly cooked, okay? 
to gain the full benefits. You, you're not, you can't eat all of these raw. You, you're going to see what I mean. With a variety of options available, you can take your time. Blah blah blah. Okay. So the, these are this is the list that I've given myself. This is this comes from the top twenty prebiotic foods, and about a handful of them I didn't I hadn't even heard of before, and I <laughs> since found they're, they're common in Asian Southeast Asian diets. So I'm not even going to mention them. So the first one on the top of my list is apples because they're really easy to consume. They're not necessarily the highest quality prebiotic, but they're, they're very good. They're in the top 20 and they're easy for us to consume. Apples, bananas, avocados. They're my three that I get every day, no matter what. I've always got bananas here. I've always got apples, apples in the house and I've always got avocados. Onions, garlics and leeks are what I make sure that I eat in my diet. So you can't eat them raw, obviously. You can, and I do. I do sometimes, you know, Rad and I used to consume a whole crushed garlic when we were feeling sick or coming down with a cold or something like that. And I still do that to this day. I don't eat raw onion though. I actually, I do, I do in my salads and on my sandwiches. I eat raw red onion. Asparagus is really, really good. And then we get into the stuff that I put in my smoothies. Oats, flax seeds, and cocoa, raw cocoa really really powerful prebiotics wheat bran and seaweed those are the, the the last two really really good ones that i get in my diet and seaweed is not something i consume a lot at home but one of our favorite pastimes my, with my kids is to go to sushi and eat sushi and i make sure that i have a seaweed salad probably once a week and and, and rad was even chowing down seaweed for a while there in the gym weren't you yeah, absolutely. you were getting the big sheets of it and just yeah, was, eating it and straight. I, I was doing it for different reasons, though. I was doing it for testosterone production because seaweed yeah, actually right. helps <clears throat> boost testosterone. Okay, so then the last two supplements I take in supplement form. I take and that and that's cognac root, K O N J A C root, and acacia gum. And the acacia gum you get in powder form, same with cognac root. Acacia gum is only found, it's, it, it comes from a sap that falls from a tree in Africa. And, and that's really, really good. That's probably the gold standard prebiotic if you can get your hands on it. But it's quite expensive because, of course, it's coming from Africa. Cognac root, our VPA supplement sells it. And it's very, very cost effective. I think it's like $18 or $19 for a tub. For a hundred and serves. you only use what's that right for a hundred serves yeah for a hundred serves and it's and it's really really an easy way to boost your prebiotics and i just add it to my daily morning smoothie and and i also add flax seeds oats and wheat bran in my in my smoothie and i also add psyllium husk but that's not a pre prebiotic that's a non-soluble fiber so when we're getting those things plentifully in our diet and keep in mind that one of the strongest findings from the Gut Microbiome Project study that's been going on for the last 14 years or so is that getting about 50 different foods a week is what you should aim for, which seems crazy. It seems like a lot, you know. But then when you think, okay, apples, bananas, onions, garlic, leeks, asparagus, oats, flaxseed, cocoa, wheat bran, seaweed, cognac root, acacia gum, that's almost 20 already. You know, herbs and, and I'm spices sure you are considered a food group as well. Exactly. Herbs and spices. So if you cook then you've got all the different herbs, meats then. that you're getting. You know, I try to eat a variety of different meats, pork, chicken, beef, lamb and seafoods uh, that, you know, that I've just rattled off maybe five or six there. So we're already well over halfway there, you know, and and then you start to add in the veggies that you add to your, you know, to your diet. So and then a couple of unhealthy foods, you know, so. We've got, we've got our prebiotics coming in through our diet. Then we want to sort of, if you're, if you're really wanting to get the gold standard, then we want to bolster our diet with a good, healthy probiotic. I, le I mentioned the two that are really, really helpful for energy levels and weight loss, which is the B coagulans and the B bifidum family. And then we want to try to get postbiotics created in the gut. And we can supplement. I'll read an excerpt here that I was able to come across by doing just five minutes of study online. Examples of postbiotics include the short chain fatty acid, butyric acid or butyrate, acetic acid or acetate, and propionic acid or prop propionate. These molecules are produced when good probiotic bacteria break down dietary fiber from foods such as fruits and vegetables, grains and legumes. Tributyrin is a triglyceride obtained by formal acid acylation of three hydroxyl groups of glycerol by butyric acid. 
It has a role as an EC 3.5, 1.9 histone dealkalize. I, I know that you, you guys aren't going to understand this inhibitor because I don't even understand it. Protective agent and apoptosis inducer, a pro drug and an antineoplastic anti agent. It is a triglyceride and a butyrate ester. The only reason why I'm sharing this is because tributyrin is something that you can supplement. You can buy it online. So if you wanted to go out and try to create a protocol that is going to give you immediate benefit because alterations to the diet take time, then you could potentially go and get a supplement of tributyrin. You could get a probiotic that has the B coagulin and B bifidum family of probi probiotic in it. And then you could go shopping and make sure that you get all of those prebiotic fibers when you added to your shopping list. Start consuming that stuff and yeah, watch what happens, see what happens, you know. But let me end on this. And I think Rad would have explained this before. And Rad, you can bring yourself back on the, the, the screen if you want so that we can both uh, agree on this together. None of this is going to matter if you have a diet really high in either recreational drugs. So I think one of the worst things you can possibly do is be using reg like uh, regularly using recreational drugs like amphetamines, of course, methamphetamines, things like that. That is like a nuclear warhead in your gut. Also, antibiotics. If you're taking an antibiotic, a long-term antibiotic for something, then the, not, this stuff is not going to help. It's because the antibiotic's just going to kill it all. And alcohol. Alcohol on a regular basis is ab is an absolutely destructive force to your gut microbiome. And so, for me, when I went through a recent relationship breakup three years ago, uh, we went through a really tough time during COVID. Our gym, you know, effectively we lost the gym. We were forced to sell the gym because we were just racking up too much debt. That was my identity for many, many years. You know, it was very stressful. There was a death in the family and then my relationship broke down and I lost effectively my family unit, you know, and, and I, I like really relapsed and like many people locked down by yourself in those horrible COVID lockdowns, we, I started drinking again, you know, excessively. And so my gut was really bad for a couple of years again. And I went back on antidepressants and, and, uh, uh, you know, it was just an awful time. And so all of this stuff, none of this stuff would have helped me during that period of time, because I was just doing all these things that were just like, there was no, there was no way that I could offset that. So the last year and a half for me has been a process of regaining my health. So please, Believe me when I say that I'm not so far from where, if you're watching this and you've got um, uh, gut problems, I'm not far from where you are now. A, a year and a half ago, I was still taking antidepressants and still drinking a lot, you know. And so my journey for the last year has been get off the antidepressants, get off, quit drinking alcohol again, and then start going through this process, really, really focused process of restoring my gut health again, because it got really, really bad again. And that's where I'm at now, you know, and this is why I'm doing all of this sort of research and, and looking at how I can, how I can fix it. Uh, the answer is not to just focus on a few really healthy foods that actually has, is problematic in and of itself. The answer is diversity in the diet, clean up the things that you're doing that aren't healthy, Exercise is really, really important, especially if you suffer mental depression. And yeah, just do it step by step, one thing at a time. You know, for me, first of all, it was weaning myself off the alcohol, then it was coming off the antidepressants. And now it's really, really doubling down on a healthy diet. And I've been feeling, you know, a hundred times better this year than I was last year. And then even last year was an improvement on the year before that. Rad, what would you say? 100%. Especially about drugs and alcohol. You went into this in the last show, I believe. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, drugs and alcohol are horrible. And, and as Marin said as well, sugar. Sugar is really bad as well, refined sugar. And for me, you know, the, it was the same journey, like removing all of the terrible stuff. But listen, I think, I, I, think, I think you should make a really strong point, Marin. Sugar, if you suck on sugar cane, it's actually not that bad for you at all, okay? Yeah, it's refined. refined. It's, it's the refining process 
of any food that makes it bad. And it's it, it, we vilify sugar, but sh- if you if I gave you a pound of sugar and said eat that, you wouldn't get through a, 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 a hundredth of it. You know, sugar is not addictive in and of itself. It's the engineering of the salt, sugar, and fat that mm. makes food addictive and really bad for you. So I, I'm a, I, I agree with Dr. Lane Norton on this one. Sugar is not the villain. It's in isolation. It is, it is the engineering of food that's the, that's the villain. Yeah, refined sugar, you're yeah. saying. Absolutely. A, and the combination of sugar, salt, and fat. You know, that's, that's where it gets really, really bad because refined sugar is, is brown sugar, white sugar. That's all refined. But we don't think about how little of that, of that you eat. You know, you, you just couldn't eat it in isolation. When it's, it's only when it's engineered into a certain food and, 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 and combined with other things that we really want to eat it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, look, licious i think i have severe depression take it one step at a time you know the number one thing the number one thing when you suffer a lot of depression is sleep like focus on that first remove anything in your way of getting really really good quality sleep and prioritize actually time blocking 10 hours a night to be in bed either reading a book and then lights off that's that's what i do i have a, literally a 10 hour period from 8 till 6 where I'm time blocked in the bedroom with no screens, no distractions. And the only thing I'm allowed in my bedroom is a fan and a book. That's it. Other, and, and, and it's just about really, really building that habit around sleep quality. And that will, that will revolutionize your, your levels of depression, just that one thing. Then once you're getting enough sleep, you're going to have energy to start doing Another thing, and that should be exercise. The second thing should be exercise and start with five minutes a day, five minutes. Just just get into a spot in your house where you've got room and do a series of squats, push-ups and sit-ups for five minutes nonstop. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 sets, you know, you'll you'll exhaust yourself doing that nonstop at your capacity. Do a version of a push-up that you can do. It could be on the knees, it could be on the toes, it could be against a wall, it could be against a couch, so you're making it easier. You know, just get your heart rate up and break a sweat. That's it. It could be five minutes of, of walking fast or jogging and slowly you'll be able to build on that. But what's what's key to building a habit is repetition, not time frame. No arbitrary time frame builds a habit. It's only repetition. So do it as regularly as possible. And I like to say five minutes in the morning in the lounge room is easy to do, you know, um, and uh, if it's a, if it's a, you have to make that habit if you're going to make a new habit, it has to be so simple that it's actually silly not to do it. If you try to make it too big, that it's easy not to do it, you'll never build a new habit. Rad, have you got anything to finish on? And, no. and reach out to us, comment, stay connected. This is something that I've dealt with for the last 25 years of my life. And I've got lots of experience and we all have bad days. I have bad days. I have days where I just literally can't do anything. My depression is so bad. You know, but it's usually always after a really bad night's sleep or, uh, uh, you know, numerous bad nights sleep for whatever reason. You know, sometimes your kids are just up all night or they're sick. You know, we've got a sick kid at home or something like that. Then, yeah, I, I, I relapse and suffer depression. You know, depression's never cured. It's only managed. All right. Hope you guys learned something good from that. Thanks for listening. And if you've got any ideas for what you want to hear us talk about next, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in our next episode. Good work, guys. It's done.